everybody, my name is Joshua Inyard, the Gray Bearded Green Beret, and I'm here to show you exactly what is in my 18 pound bug out bag. In any sort of a bug out scenario, when your main goal is to put distance in between yourself and whatever the incident is that you're running from, the key is to be lightweight and fast while still being able to provide for all of your immediate needs. Maintaining your core body temperature, consuming water to stay hydrated, and consuming calories for energy. And to be able to cover ground quickly without wearing yourself out. In addition, you need to be able to take care of any life-threatening injuries that you may have sustained during the incident or since you've left the incident. And you need to be able to effectively and efficiently navigate from point A to point B. With this in mind, it's important that you really streamline your kit and only carry what's absolutely necessary as well as allowing for some redundancy for some of the more important things to allow for contingencies that you didn't see coming. While it may be tempting to carry as many modern conveniences as you possibly can to make your life easier, the simple fact is that the heavier this pack is, the slower you're going to move, the more water you're going to need to consume to stay hydrated, and the more calories you're going to burn, and therefore more calories you need to consume to keep your energy levels up. All three of those things go against your main goal, which is to put distance between you and whatever the incident is as quickly as possible. You should never plan on carrying a bag that is, is more than 20% of your actual body weight. A better goal would be to have a, a bag that's 10% of your body weight and it'll make you that much faster and that much more efficient. So long as you're still able to provide for all your basic needs. My bag weighs in at only 18 pounds. That's a little less than 9% of my total body weight. This allows me to move extremely fast and cover longer distances without getting tired and still provides for all of my needs. Now the bag starts with a good, durable backpack. And like my clothing choices, I prefer natural colors that blend well in a woodland environment, but I don't want a true camouflage pattern that's gonna stick out in an urban environment. I also try to avoid clothing and equipment that has too much of a tactical look to it. This is another thing that allows me to be a little more inconspicuous regardless of where I find myself. I may plan on bugging out to the wilderness, but I may have to start my bug out from an urban location. I may have to go through an urban location, or I may have to come back into an urban location to resupply at some point. So I don't want anything that makes me stick out. Let's take a look inside. Now, as far as my immediate needs, I need to maintain my core body temperature. And especially within the first, you know, 24 hours or so, in the beginning of a bug out scenario, when I'm not sure, you know, whether it's gonna be a permissive or a non-permissive environment, I'm gonna be extremely careful. So fire is not gonna be something that I'm gonna do if I don't have to. So the primary function of my body's thermoregulation, maintaining my body's core temperature, falls on my shelter kit. And every good shelter kit consists of something to sleep under, something to sleep on, something to sleep in, and some cordage to hold it all together. For something to sleep under, I prefer a military poncho. Uh, it takes the place of both a rain jacket and a tarp, so it's multifunctional. And when I'm moving, I could use this in place of a rain jacket. It's large enough to protect me from the rain and also drape over the back of my equipment and keep my equipment dry. It also has these grommets that I can use to tie up simple and effective poncho shelters when I'm stationary. And as far as this being camouflaged, I don't necessarily mind my shelter system being camouflaged because most of the time this is going to be packed up in my bag and not seen. One of the benefits of having this camouflage pattern is then when I, when I do stop and I do put up a shelter, this camouflage pattern offers me a little bit of concealment. When it comes to something to sleep in, it's hard to beat a, a military poncho liner for something that's lightweight and extremely packable. It also saves me time when I go to pack up because I don't have to worry about a stuff sack or any cinch straps or anything. It can be crammed into all the voids in your pack rather quickly. The majority of our body heat is lost to conduction from our bodies being in direct contact with the ground. In my opinion, thermal mattresses are a little too bulky and they catch on too many things. They stick out from the sides of your pack a lot of times 
they catch on a lot of things in the woods. And for that reason, I like to carry a simple bivy sack. This bivy sack can be stuffed with leaves and debris to make what's called a browse bed mattress to sleep on. And it's also waterproof and windproof. So if I don't feel like putting up a poncho shelter, I can tuck myself inside here with my poncho liner and use this as a standalone shelter and be fairly protected from the element. Now, as far as cordage goes, I prefer Titan Survivor Cord for a number of reasons. This is high quality, true mil spec paracord that has the outer sheath and it has the seven inner strands. It has three additional strands. One is a copper utility wire. One is a monofilament fishing line. The other is a waxed jute strand that I can fluff up and use for emergency tinder. This prevents me from having to carry an extra spool of wire for use in trapping. Um, and it also ha prevents me from carrying an additional spool of fishing line for food procurement on top of giving me an additional emergency tinder source for fire starting. True Millspec paracord has a breaking strength of 550 pounds and this Titan survivor cord which is true mill spec plus three strands has a breaking strength of 660 pounds so it's going to hold whatever I need it to hold. Lastly I carry six lightweight aluminum tent stakes. This is something that's more of a convenience when I do finally settle in for the night to throw up a shelter I want it to go up as quickly as possible although I can make these in the field there's one more thing that consumes time and energy that I can eliminate without adding much weight to my pack. In most cases, I'm trying not to be found. One of the quickest ways I can signal my location is to have a roaring fire. The flames and the smoke can be seen day or night, and it can be smelled from a long way off. It's not something I, would, I will likely need in the beginning, and not something I want unless I absolutely have to. So I've built the rest of my kit to ensure it isn't an immediate need. However, I may need it for thermoregulation, I may need it to boil water, may need it to cook food, etc. So I need to be able to make it as quickly as possible in all types of weather. Fire is an extremely critical skill overall, so it deserves some redundancy. A lighter is the easiest method since it's sure flame, and keep in mind that is not the same thing as sure fire. I'll normally keep the lighter in my pocket so that if I'm separated from my pack for some reason, whether that's voluntarily or involuntarily, I still have a chance of having an ignition source. The main problems with a lighter are that they're pretty challenging to use in the wind and the rain, and that's likely when you're gonna need it the most. The other problem is the fuel can leak out if the button is being depressed in your bag or if it's in your pocket or in your kit. And if they get wet, you have to dry them out before using them. Also, they've got a lot of small moving parts that can break. So I normally carry my lighter in an ExoTac fire sleeve to prevent all of this. In an effort to conserve what little resources I have, I like to have a couple more durable and longer lasting redundancies. For those, I choose a Fresnel lens and a ferrocerium rod. If the sun is out, I can quickly start a fire with little effort using solar techniques that take nothing away from my kit. If that's not possible, I'll normally choose to use the ferrocerium rod. A ferro rod is a larger version of the same sparking device that's found within a lighter. I can expect this particular one and a half by six inch ferro rod to start thousands upon thousands of fires and last several years before wearing out. While each lighter may only provide hundreds of fires and last a year or so. And that's something that's important to consider when you may not be able to resupply. I can normally source dry natural tinder in any weather condition to use for starting a fire, but it's worth carrying some man-made emergency tinder to use for when dry material is scarce or not convenient to go look for. I like these fire tabs. 10 of them take up very little space and weigh next to nothing. I can pull each tab apart to make three fires each. They also work really well with a lighter that's out of fuel and work great with the larger ferro rod as well. On top of emergency tinder, I generally like to carry at least three beeswax candles. These are 12 hour candles. And in addition to being a good useful tool for getting a fire going, especially in wet weather. I can also use this as kind of a, a low-key source of light uh, around my campfire that doesn't put off as much light, less likely to give me away in the event I'm using this. And if I had to, I could boil water with this. It would just take a little while. But each one of these candles burns for 12 hours, so I've got 36 hours of light 
in every three pack. The next challenge in a bug out scenario will be remaining hydrated. Normally a person needs one half gallon, about 64 ounces per day. The need is much greater when the weather is hot, the area you're working in is especially dry, or if there's a lot of physical exertion happening. Like you will be when you're carrying a pack great distances across difficult terrain, under stress, and possibly injured. Water is heavy. It weighs about eight pounds per gallon. We've already discussed that carrying extra weight will require more water consumption. So for me, I would rather rely on resupplying at every opportunity than attempt to carry a full day or a few days worth of water, which could be several gallons. I should also mention that I'm not anywhere near the desert and I don't plan on going anywhere near the desert. So if you are, you, want to make, you may want to carry more containers of water from the start. For a container, I prefer a single walled stainless steel 32 ounce water bottle. Single walled so that I can boil water in it to disinfect if needed. 32 ounces for a couple of reasons. One, that's half of my normal daily water requirement and it's roughly one liter which is what my water purification tablets are meant for. The nesting cup allows me to have a secondary container and also allows me to char material for fire if needed. Again, if you're in a desert or extremely hot or dry weather environment or freshwater sources are a little bit fewer and farther between in your area than they are for where I'm planning on being, I would highly recommend carrying at least two containers of water instead of just one. An additional 32 ounces would only add two pounds to your total pack weight. A cotton shemag is useful for a number of reasons, but it's part of my water kit to act as a pre-filter for my water bottle to keep debris out when I'm filling it. I can also wet it and wrap it around the bottle and take advantage of evaporative cooling if the water's too hot to drink. This would also keep your water and yourself cool in a hotter environment should you need to. Because I don't want to start a fire unless I have to, I carry a small, lightweight water filter. I prefer the Sawyer Mini. It filters down to a 0.1 micron level and it's rated for 100,000 gallons. If I were to drink two gallons a day, which is way above my requirement, I could expect this filter to last me almost 137 years. I could use it in several different ways as well, which we'll get into later. It also comes with you know, a couple of other accessories, one of which being a large syringe that you can use to flush this periodically that doubles as an irrigation syringe for wounds. So this is also part of my first aid kit. I also carry 20 water purification tabs. While my primary means would be to use the water filter and when possible to boil to save resources, there could be situations where I could drop one of these tablets in 32 ounces of contaminated water and let them do the work for me while I continue to move. An example that comes to mind is crossing a stream during movement that I don't have time or this situation doesn't allow me to stop to actually take the time to filter it. I could just fill the bottle as I cross and keep on moving. These tablets alone will give me about 10 days of my normal water requirement. Food is not necessarily an immediate need, however it is a metabolic need and you're going to be burning calories at an extremely high rate. You can't afford to completely let yourself tank mentally or physically and you likely don't have time to trap fish or hunt right away. I carry emergency rations in my bag to make sure I have some calories to bring in that I don't have to work for. My goal is to create distance as quickly as possible and that requires energy. I prefer the SOS emergency rations because they're individually wrapped once you open the main pack and they taste pretty good. Each pack has nine individually wrapped bars that are about 400 calories each for a total of 3,600 calories. So this is 3,600 calories that I don't have to work for, that don't take any time. I can eat these on the move and never stop. Once those run out and as opportunities present themselves, I want to be equipped with at least some basic supplies to procure food that don't add much weight and take up very little space. We had already talked about the monofilament fishing line and the utility wire that are found in the survivor cord. I also carry a Ready Man Wilderness Survival Card and this has hooks, arrows, points, an improvised uh, fish frog spear point and some snare locks as well as uh, a couple of little tools. So this, coupled with the monofilament fishing line and the utility wire that I can double over and use a snare wire inside the survivor cord, gives me a nice little kit to be able to fish or trap when the opportunity presents itself. It would no doubt be a highly dangerous event that pushes you to bug out, and while not all would involve gunfire or sharp metal or explosions or what have you, there are some that we can all likely think of that might. 
If you become injured at the start of an incident or somewhere along the way, you need to be able to take care of it to the best of your ability. I like to carry a kit that can handle injuries sustained from things like gunshot wounds or lacerations to the extremity, torso, or head. I like the Black Scout Survival Individual First Aid Kit, the BSS IFAC, as the baseline and then I add a couple of things to that based on my experience and my competency level. This allows me to take care of major bleeding, sucking chest wounds, tension pneumothorax, manage airways, what have you, any sort of trauma. And that could be either for myself or the people that are with me. And of course, I like to keep that somewhere where I can get to it quickly. You need to have the ability to navigate from where you are to where you're going as efficiently as possible. You've got very limited resources at your disposal, so you need to make time quickly. Hopefully you're moving towards a well-stocked, much safer location. Having said that, you may not be able to take the route you originally planned on taking, and you need to be able to adjust on the fly based on circumstances. I like to have a map of the entire area I expect to be going through, along with some waterproof paper and some mechanical pencils for recording information and route planning. As far as compasses, I prefer the Sunto MC2 compass because it's got a sighting mirror that I can also use for signaling and it also has a small magnifying lens that I can use as a backup fire starting method. It also has built-in scales that I can use in place of a protractor or coordinate scale. I also keep pace beads so that I can easily keep track of distances traveled, which is extremely important in the event I have to change routes on the fly. Knowing what distance I had moved from the last known point before changing direction allows me to better pinpoint where I might. Now, there are a few tools that I feel are absolutely essential for every bug out bag. So the first one being a headlamp with extra batteries. The second being a good full tang fixed blade belt knife. And the third being a multi-tool. I prefer the headlamps that you can put a physical filter on, like a red lens filter over a light that has it as a button option. If I'm trying to stay con as concealed as possible without compromising my position, the last thing I want to do is hit the wrong button and flash a white light instead. I also carry three or four sets of extra batteries, which should be more than enough to get me where I'm going, especially if I'm trying not to use light at all when I'm traveling or when I'm working around camp at night. And I prefer the longer lasting lithium style batteries for this option. In my opinion and experience, the best fixed blade knife for the money is the Mora Carbon Garberg. It's full tang, maintains a good sharp edge, has a good 90 degree spine, has a scandy grind that's easy to sharpen in the field, and this thing can take a beating. This thing will do everything you need it to do in the field and then some. And lastly, my choice for the multi-tool would be a Leatherman. As far as the model, I'm just looking for one that has pliers, wire cutters, has an awl for stitching and repair, has a good saw on it, and in addition to all that, I want it to have a good blade so that I have a backup. Of course, depending on your situation and your experience level and what you plan for, you may want to add certain tactical gear uh, and personal security items as needed. Uh, it's going to increase the overall weight of your pack and slow you down, but, it, but it's also going to greatly enhance your security in an uncertain situation. But that's a conversation for another day. This particular go bag has been developed to take care of all of your immediate needs. And at only 18 pounds, it won't weigh you down. Until next time, stay safe, keep prepping.